Hello everyone, this is Josh from Cornerstone Survival School. Before we start building any type of fire, I think that it's important that we have a discussion about some of the basic principles of firecraft that we're going to need to apply. One of the most important principles of survival is the survival rule of threes. It says that you can live three minutes without air, three hours without shelter, three days without water, and three weeks without food. Starvation is generally not what kills people in the wilderness. What kills people in the wilderness is exposure, exposure to the elements. You're exposed to, to cold wind and cold weather and wet conditions, and snow, rain, sleet, ice. That's what kills people and that's what you need protection from. So let's talk about some of the purposes of a fire. One of the most important purposes of a survival fire is that it is a form of shelter. I can use it to dry my clothes, I can use it to dry my gear, I can keep myself warm and it's going to provide comfort. Some of the other uses, of course, I can purify water with it to make it safe to drink. I can cook food, I can preserve food using the smoke. Uh, it makes an excellent signal. Not only can you see it during the day, but you can also see it at night and you can see it from some distance away. And unlike most signals, it has an olfactory aspect to it. You know, you can smell it from a long way off. That might help you if you're trying to link up with the rest of your party or if you're trying to be found by a rescue party. And then another thing that, that a lot of folks don't think about is it does leave a trace. I mean, if you, if you had a survival fire, you're moving from point A to point B trying to make your way back to civilization. Every time you stop and, and lay a fire, you're leaving a trail. One of the greatest aspects of a fire is the positive psychological effect. And having a warm, comfortable fire to sit next to, it kind of gives you that sense, that feeling that, that everything's going to be okay. With all the different uses that a fire has, uh, between you know shelter, or water, food, signal, and just the overall psychological effect, the ability to start and maintain a fire is critical to survival. Whenever you have a fire, though, it's important to have a fire that's safe. You don't want to burn down your shelter. You don't want to burn down your environment. If you get injured because you got to burn, there's a really, really good chance that that's going to get infected and that's going to cause you more problems. So whenever you're building a fire, think about fire safety. Look at your conditions. If it's dry out, if there's a danger of an ember sparking off your fire and you know, starting the woods next to you on fire or catching your shelter on fire, then that's something you're going to want to try to mitigate. What I'll do is I'll clear a three foot base, uh, scratch it right down to the ground, and then I'll make a fire ring around that. Now when you make your fire ring, it's important to not to use non-porous rocks. Don't use like your sandstones or anything like that. Try to use a good solid rock. Uh, and don't use rocks that you found in the stream that have been soaking in water, you know, for who knows how long. Because when the, once those heat up, uh, that moisture that's trapped inside will cause them to explode and you'll have rocks flying, you'll have fragments of rocks flying everywhere, uh, which can cause some injury. Another important safety aspect of having a fire is you need to make sure that your fires are ventilated. Sometimes when the weather's turning, you want to bring your fire inside, you know, or at least, you know, reestablish a small fire inside to protect it so that when the weather gets better, you can reestablish it easier, but you need to be careful with that uh, because of carbon monoxide poisoning. Uh, if there's not good ventilation, then that carbon monoxide poisoning could be a real problem. Another important concept that you need to understand about fires is the fire triangle. Now, if you look at the fire triangle, you have heat, you have air and you have fuel. Well, you can take fuel and you can break it down even further. You've got three different things that you need to think about with fuel. With fuel, you have three different types. You have tender, you have kindling, and then you have your actual fuel. Most people have probably heard the phrase where the rubber meets the road. When you think about tender, tender is where the heat meets the fuel. So tender is one of the most important things that can make or break your ability to start a fire. Now there are different types of tender. There's natural tenders and there's man-made tenders and we'll get into those a little further in a future video. Uh, but what you're looking for in tender is it needs to be fluffy. Think like a cotton ball. It needs to have a lot of surface area to catch a spark or take a flame. Uh, it needs to be dry and it needs to be something that's highly combustible. The key concept of tender, other than it being dry, fluffy, and highly combustible, is that it readily accepts the ignition source that you've chosen to use. Be it an open flame, a hot spark, or transfer in an ember, it needs to take the heat from that quickly and spread it throughout the rest of your fuel sources. Kindling, on the other hand, kindling is something that gradually increases in size and then helps establish your fire. What I start with is matchstick size, then I go to pencil size, then I go to marker size. Then once that's burning and established, then I can start adding my fuel. Fuel for me is usually wrist size or larger. Um, and what that does is, is it sustains the fire for long periods of time once it's burning. And of course, there's a couple different types of wood you could use for fuel. You've got softwoods and you've got hardwoods. A couple of the key things to think about is that softwoods catch quickly and they burn quickly. So you need more of it. And hardwoods are gonna catch slower 
but they're going to burn slower as well, so you need less of it. Now before you start building your fire, you want to make sure that you have everything prepared ahead of time. You need to have all your tinder, you need to have all your kindling, and you need to have all of your fuel. You want to gather enough to make it through the night. You don't want to be up all night gathering firewood as it goes out. So you want to gather all that stuff ahead of time. A good rule of thumb is, when you think you have enough fuel to get through the night, you need five times more. So those are some of the basic firecraft principles that we're going to use every time we make a fire. Your ability to apply those principles are going to make you a lot more successful when you're out in the wilderness. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you want to get future videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.